in British literature, a sense of place and a sense of geography permeates pretty much everything. It's hard to think of a classic British writer who doesn't use landscape. A writer has got to be soaked in, in the tradition of his, of his world. One definition of literature, certainly fiction, I think, is you know the idea of characters moving in across a landscape of some kind. Um, you, nearly every story has to be set somewhere. Novels teach you about a place. They teach you to feel and see it differently and they make places larger. So. I think, like all readers, I enjoy the process of entering, uh, as it were, another little world, another location, which is not directly my own. I think if I had to you know, choose one thing that characterised British literature, both prose and poetry, I would say it was geography and, and, you know, more widely, I would say landscape. British literature, really from the earliest, a lot of the Anglo-Saxon poetry, although usually about the sea, is about the way environment and emotion are related. What a landscape and what place has sort of embedded within it are all of those shared uh, cultural associations. And as a writer, when you're looking to uh, connect with a reader. Your landscape is a fantastic shortcut. If I take a train north out of Euston, um, especially, I can't help thinking of Dombey and Son and that famous chapter six and the great cutting um, that goes right through Camden Town, Primrose Hill, um, dug by Irish navvies. You would find uh, the undiscovered country of the nearby, as it were, astonishments on your doorstep where you were least expecting them. Um, but also you would go to distant places and make that difference, that, that foreignness, that strangeness, somehow comprehensible to yourself and to your reader. And if I read uh, a novel which is set, let's say, in South America, where I've never been, uh, there are going to be all kinds of references which will go over the top of my head. But if I get, nonetheless, that feeling of life lived in a locality, then that is authentic for me, and that will take me into the book, and that will grip me. But I was re recently reading um, Dickens, and getting such pleasure from the fact that he walks, you know, his characters walk around London, so they talk about sort of walking from Islington to Streatham, and you so you suddenly get an idea of what the 19th century was like because that is some walk. Landscape is a character, is a strong character in a lot of British literature. It's just that we didn't really know until recently how to think about it, how weather might bear down on people's lives. I mean, you, you read the novels of Thomas Hardy, you see that very, very clearly, how the heathland might expand or contract people's senses of themselves. Um, George Eliot has a wonderful phrase. She talks about how um, certain kinds of experience might enlarge the range self has to swim in. I don't write anything until I have encountered what I'm writing about as a character. I will actually sit with water until I feel its personality has communicated to me. Almost every significant rock or landmark has language associated with it, has stories associated with it. We live in a densely, historically storiated landscape. How do you find um, new ways of seeing those, joining those stories up, making song lines, as it were, um, joining place to place, story to story, and image to image?